There's a new Kurzgesagt video. Never before in human done. history have we been richer, more advanced, more powerful. And yet, we feel... It's called, can you fix climate change? He's probably going to say, I'm predicting he's going to say, yes, we can, but it's going to be really, really hard. Overwhelmed in the face of rapid climate change. It seems simple on the surface. I never watch TV, but yesterday we were at Lisa's mom's, and what I like to do at Lisa's mom's is to watch TV. I never watch TV, right? Just basic, normal TV. And there was this big documentary about uh, these people in Germany that care about the water, and they were, like, proving... The, how do you call the water that's in the ground? Um, uh, the, the the source water, what do you call it? And they're like proving it's all gone and all these big companies are taking it away, groundwater. And water is fucked, man. Um, and, uh, uh, lately, my, my stocks are doing very bad. I, I'm just losing money in the stock market. But the water stocks are just shading on everything, man. The water stocks... I'm actually thinking, and this might be really dumb of slowly putting my portfolio, my stock market investments, on a sector bet, uh, meaning I put all my eggs into one basket. I'm thinking of heavily investing even more into the water crisis. Water stocks, everything with water. I, I might take a big risk there, man. I don't know. Greenhouse dumb, gases but... trap energy from the sun and transfer it to our atmosphere. I think I'm gonna this leads to warmer winters, it. harsher summers. Dry places become drier and wet places wetter. Countless ecosystems will die while the rising oceans swallow coasts and the city. Do you guys have the same feeling of this is kind of getting boring now? Like, I have heard about climate change so often now. I get it, you know? I respect it. I'm with you. I get it. But it's like, no, I, I, I get it, okay? I don't need these videos anymore telling us that the world is going to end. I, I get it now, you know? As we build on them. I finally understand. So why don't we just, I mean, like, I, I prevent all of that? Well... Okay, it's complicated. Bigger. How do you prevent it? The That's... public debate about stopping rapid climate change often focuses on a few key features like coal plants, cars or burping cows. And so the solutions are often simplistic. Rows of solar panels, biking to work, something something sustainability. And a huge talking point. Also, something that annoys me lately is in the last years, right? Look, yesterday I was watching TV. I never watch TV. Every single commercial is about green stuff. It's about hey we have a new phone and it's a green phone it's fair trade oh you need a new fucking pen this is the first ever green pen made with green products and all day long green 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 the bakanga you go to the fucking sh sh uh, supermarket and oh yeah green and fair trade blah 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 it's cool i get it but it's also all day long in your face man jesus and sometimes i feel like all oh, these labels really legit who who t is all these green labels legit and makes point sense? Point is Educate. personal responsibility. How you should change your... Let's be real. These companies are mostly greenwashing now because they know it's money, right? They know the young people. Dude, you want to say make up to young girls? You got to make it ooh, green and fair trade because they love that shit. Lifestyle to prevent rapid climate about. change, which we'll find out together in the next few minutes. This is one of those videos where we want to encourage you to watch to the end because to discuss real, doable solutions, we first need to understand the problem. Capitalism understands young people want green shit, so we have to make green shit. That's actually a beautiful thing about capitalism. It, it shows how the market has demand now on green shit and it, yeah, it's actually a good Modern thing. industrial society as we constructed it in the last 150 years is inherently destructive to the planet. Basically, everything we do to make our lives easier, safer, and more comfortable is making things worse for the biosphere. The food we eat, the streets we walk on, the clothes we wear, the gadgets we use, the way we move around, and the pleasant temperatures we artificially create around us. While most people know about the serious impact of energy, beef, cars, and planes, many major polluters are barely ever talked about. The emissions leaking out of landfills are as significant as the emissions of all the jets in the air. More CO2 is released to run our homes than from all cars combined. And the emissions produced when making a new car is equivalent... Sometimes I think that the only solution to all of this, which is the FDP, the party today in the election has this idea, the only way to still save us is technology. That in the next decade, some kind of technology is found that fixes it, like something that binds CO2 or something which is a great thing to think about. But I also feel like it's very bad for the human race. If the human race never learns from their behavior and all their sins, all their misdeeds 
is being rescued by technology, we will never learn anything, you know. And ...to building just two meters of road. So it is nice to switch to electric cars, but they we won't solve any anything way, so if That's we a keep building... We never learn anything anyway. That's a good argument, but we do learn, right? Look at Corona. People are far more uh, sensible now for these whole germ virus things, man. Building roads the same way. Fixing one small part of the industrial system is not enough. Each of the many different parts needs its own solution, and many of them aren't straightforward. But even where we know what Thank to do, really just because a solution exists, doesn't mean we're able or willing to implement it. There are many grey areas in the fight against rapid climate change. The most prominent one is the divide between rich and poor. Emissions versus poverty. There is a clear connection between the prosperity of a nation and its carbon emissions. In other words, richer people tend to cause more emissions. So the key to fixing climate change is simply for the world's richest to cut back on their extravagant lifestyles, right? While this would help, it wouldn't make the problem go away. This is because 63% of global emissions come from low to middle income countries. Countries where most people are not living extravagantly, but are trying to escape poverty at worst and achieve a comfortable lifestyle at best. The unfortunate reality is that currently, escaping poverty and becoming middle class creates unavoidable emissions. So asking developing countries to cut emissions just looks like an attempt to keep them down. It's very hard to argue that a region should protect their primeval forests and spend money on solar panels instead of burning wood when it can't meet basic needs for significant parts of its population. But cutting back is not a popular demand, especially if the countries making these demands got rich by causing environmental damage in the past. So for billions of people, more emissions are a good thing, personally. When we forget about this, we tend to propose unworkable solutions. Take concrete. 8% of CO2 emissions are released by the concrete manufacturing industry. Uh, I was reading an article that the concrete uh, industry is at a big, big turning point because here we go. This is, you can literally Google this. The world is running out of sand. Yes, and you're like, what? We have the desert and shit. But in order to make, um, uh, what's it called? Concrete, you need a certain sand. You can't just take Sahara sand. And the world is running out of sand. I've seen this documentary where China is going to India and they're taking away beaches without India knowing. They're like, hey, well, the beach is gone. They're just taking fucking sand, dude. Uh, the, the the big building boom on earth right now needs a lot of sand and I've even seen uh, investment opportunities into the sand industry, man. Straight. Okay, cool. Sand. You Stop can't just using take, concrete, uh, right? Sand. But right now, concrete is also a cheap and easy way for growing populations in developing countries to build affordable housing. And there are many examples like that. Even rich countries aren't immune from disagreeing about rapid climate change solutions. Banning coal, gas and oil from the energy mix is slowed down by heated discussions about what should replace them. The citizens can be strictly against nuclear power, but also oppose wind or solar infrastructure in their backyards. In principle, all of these issues can be overcome, but there are things we don't currently know how to overcome. The most problematic one is food. Emit or die. We will soon need to feed 10 billion people, and we don't know how to do that without emitting greenhouse gases. Like, again, I, I don't want to sound edgy, and some guy even said fascist talking point. How about just a normal talking point of thinking? Billion people, and we don't Why does the human race assume that this is normal? Why are we like... Know how to do yeah, that? we're going to go up to 10 billion. I mean, we have many, many fucking problems, which might wipe out the entire race, but no one is even discussing this, man. ...without emitting greenhouse gases. And I know it's flattening down, I know... Because of the nature of modern food production that requires fertilizers or manure, it's impossible to have zero emissions food. Rice alone emits so much methane each year that it practically equals the emissions of all the air traffic in the world. What's worse is that the foods we like the most Indeed, emit right. the most. 57% of food emissions come from animal-based foods, although they make up only 18% of the world's calories and 37% of its protein. And as people across the world grow richer, they want more meat. Traditional diets in... But isn't there like a counter-movement to that now? If you look at rich countries, all the young people are like, oh, less meat, a vegetarian. Most cultures were like primarily plant-based with a little meat on top. 
But with the rise of industrial-style meat production and factory farming, meat has become a staple food, a regular indulgence in developed countries and a symbol of status and wealth in developing countries. Today, about 40% of the world's habitable land is used for meat production in some form or another, the size of North and South America combined. This is land we could otherwise allow Jesus. native ecosystems to regrow, like forests in the Amazon. And that's another point I always, when I ever watch these videos, and this is going to be weird maybe for you because it's very personal, but I always think about these videos uh, with the background of my investments in real life, which is water stocks. All this food that they're going to create, I, I have this weird feeling, I feel like I'm, I feel like a Bitcoin guy, oh, Bitcoin is so good, uh, coop, 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 that they're going to need so much water for the food for 10 billion people, man. Dude, I'm really at a point right now in my real life, I don't know if you care, but I'm thinking of heavily, heavily investing into water stuff. And suck carbon out of the atmosphere, maybe. but instead, most of it is used to feed animals. In the end, it's pretty simple. Eating Thank less you. meat alone won't stop climate change, but we also can't stop climate change without eating less meat. The same holds true for other things that are less crucial to our survival, but frankly not realistic to make go away. Like what happens, Israel will survive. The thing is, Israel will survive. Uh, as I was researching water technology, Israel is the leader, one of the leaders of global water technology, especially these salt nation plants. Uh, if you Google this shit, man, I really, in my free time, I, 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 this is like kind of my hobby, man, water and stuff. Israel is the global leader of desalination plants. They invested heavily in desalination plants on the Levante, on the Mediterranean Sea, and now Israel has a great great very modern uh, a great system of desaltening uh the mediterranean and having great water supply man they're doing a great fucking job there man air travel overseas shipping and future, mining and, and the production of devices man. that play youtube the videos sort of burn so what does this mean solutions versus expenses in principle, this technology you know, already, already exists. Direct air capture of CO2 draws carbon dioxide from the air so that it can be stored underground or transformed into products. So why aren't we implementing it in every industry everywhere? Because with the technology we have right now, this would cost some $10 trillion per year or half the United States GDP. This money has to come from somewhere. Currently, no one is offering it. Just dumping these costs on massive polluters like steel mills and coal power stations would double the cost of their products, and so these industries that operate on very tight profit margins would go bankrupt. Getting the government to pay for it seems logical, but a lot of state resources are actually tied up doing the opposite, like subsidizing oil and gas, which seems counterintuitive but follows clear incentives. By artificially keeping fuel prices low, shipping and everyday goods are kept artificially cheap too, which has a major social impact on billions of people around the world. That creates political lobbies Such and incentives problem, that perpetuate right? a cycle that makes it so hard to stop fossil fuel production. Yeah, I heard about uh, in China, a real estate thing is bankrupt for 300 billion. What I think is always interesting how like one company in China goes bankrupt and the whole stock market like for for one week my stocks were so low because of some Chinese like I invest in CD project and stuff and they're actually losing percentages because of some Chinese um uh, like it's crazy how the world is so fucking connected man Meanwhile, very costly solutions for a far-off problem like carbon capture Thank seem you, like they can wait as technically nobody benefits from it right yeah. now. Some argue that a move away from capitalism is the only solution to this mess. Others insist that markets should be even freer without any inter... And I'm a guy, again, I'm not really ultra educated on this. I, I, uh, think Grisenas. And here we go. This is where you could call me an eco-fascist. Let's hope I don't break toss. I believe in that. That I, I, I believe... The human race and the market cannot be left alone. It will lead to our downfall. And you have to actually control people a bit to save this planet. I believe in that. And I think that's just a scientific fact and not something political. You know, you could argue, Tommy, the communist, he's against freedom. I mean, look where freedom gets us. Everybody wants to drive a big car. People go to anti-corona demonstrations. Everybody's sharing dumb shit on Facebook. And once again, the the we have the um, Adam Smith, right? I just showed him Edinburgh uh, with the idea of the free market. I think the market should not be free. Uh, once again, I'm an amateur here. I'm not studied on this, but... If you look at a free market, what happens in a free market? Massive corruption. 
massive corruption, lobbyism, whoever has the most money can influence politics and decisions for him. The market should not be free. There's millions of examples. For Germans, Wirecard. If you leave something like Wirecard, a, a big company, unchecked, uncontrolled, if you let it be free, it leads to the downfall, it leads to corruption, it leads to people losing money. I think the market should not be free and has to be controlled in certain ways. The solution to this mess, others insist that markets should be even freer without any interventions like subsidies, and some suggest that we need what's referred to as degrowth and to cut back as a species overall. But the truth is, at least as of now, no political system is doing an impressive job at becoming truly sustainable, and none have really done so in the past. We also don't have the time to figure this out and do a lot of experiments. We must implement solutions now. Not just to halt the release of all possible greenhouse gases, but also to start reducing the amount of CO2 in the air. It's too late to just mend our ways. Imagine... We're gonna time travel into the future, okay? You and me, we're time traveling into the future. Now, we look at our time, 2021. The human race is facing the biggest threat called global warming. And you look back at it. And then you look at what concepts, what kind of alternative realities will have led to success and what will have led to non-success. And I feel like if you and me go to the future right now and we look back at 2021, I think they're gonna look at us like fucking losers. I think they're gonna look at us like they did so many mistakes, they did so much wrong, they didn't do it fast enough. That's what I think. And now imagine, look, I always, oh, this is gonna get really weird now. I always said this, the way I live life is not what will Jesus do, it's what will aliens do. Okay, that sounds weird. I explained this very often on stream. I always imagine when you have problems in politics, the world, life, human race, how would intelligent, objective aliens think about this? Is the decision we're making here good or bad? How does... This is the technocrat, right? How would a technologically advanced race look at us? Now, imagine... I mean, this is really hard and you maybe don't get it, but imagine for a second you're an objective, heavily intelligent alien who's observing Earth. Would you sit there and be like... I mean, the planet is dying, but people really need their freedom. The freedom is important, man. I mean, the, oh, the whole planet is... The human race is going to fall apart in 500 years, but at least they have freedom. Maybe we need... Maybe... I'm just... This is not... I'm not saying this is the solution, okay? Don't, don't fucking think Tommy is some eco-fascist, but just objectively speaking, imagine we will have an eco-dictatorship just, just as, a, as a game, okay? I'm not saying it's good. Okay, Twitch admin, I know you're sitting there, Twitch admin, like, oh, what? Uh, just be calm. Imagine you would have a world government of eco-dictatorship. They, they tell you, no, you cannot buy this car and you cannot eat 500 grams of meat every day. It will suck. It will destroy freedom. It will, everybody hates it. But what if, what if this system actually leads to the, to the, uh, save, save uh, to the to the defense of the entire human race. What if this system actually saves the planet? Just as a basic uh, think tank, we're not going into deep. What if these leaders are corrupt? Yeah, yeah. But just thinking, what if it would? You know, because if the future will show that an eco dictatorship actually saves this race, where freedom, freedom, freedom kills the human race. The, alter the better alternative will be... I mean, this is very what if. This is very what if. Yeah, sure. But does that make any sense here or am I just completely off? Because I believe, and here we go, here is now where the think tank stops and I'm saying my own opinion. And if you don't like it, report me, ban me. I, what I've learned in 30 years is that democracy is great. I'm a Democrat. I love democracy. But I also believe... Humans are dumb motherfuckers, man. If you give humans, on average, on a large scale, complete freedom, let them do what they want, they will do dumb shit. Because humans are dumb motherfuckers. A big chunk of humans needs some kind of leadership, and I don't mean dictatorship, listen to me, but some kind of control into the right direction, or they are completely off. I think you see it in Corona. Look at all these... Dude, last week in Germany... Let me tell you a story. Uh, last week in Germany, a 20-year-old man died. How, what happened? He was uh, a normal student, a normal guy, and he was working at the petroleum station. And a guy comes in, an older man walks in, and the, the young guy, 20 years old, this is a true story, 
every German knows this. You can Google this. He said, sir, can you please wear your mask? We are on the law uh, uh, obligated that you have to wear a mask in here. And the guy says, I will not wear a mask, blah, 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 blah. And the guy, the 20 year old is, please, sir, please wear a mask. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to give you, um, you cannot make a deal with us. Uh, you can't buy products here. So the guy drives home, gets a gun, gets back, shoots him in the head. Happened one fucking week ago. Shoots him in the head. Because the 20 year old guy told him, please wear a mask. A 20 year old guy had to die because some dude didn't agree with the mask shit. And this, these are examples where I, per the man was 40, believe that if a government or a society would have put some control over this person's freedom, this 40 year old, you could have maybe saved it there. When, when you have a society that's completely free and every idiot can be on Facebook and yeah, Corona it was made by Bill Gates, they are going to radicalize themselves and they're going to be a fucking threat to democracy. And these are the points where I, when, when I see like these Corona demonstrations, which you should demonstrate, but some people, and you know it, they go too far. They are too fucked up in their brains and they are starting to kill people, man. More and more political murders are happening in Germany. Lübke, people are just shooting people, man, because they disagree with them, dude. Uh, and this is where I think there is a thing as too much freedom. There is a thing as as it, it, it seems like certain humans and i don't even blame them are so overwhelmed with the complexity of our century like the world we live in is so crazy and so complex that some people just can't handle it anymore and they have to start coping they become communists they become right-wingers they they become crazy they become anti-corona people they're just getting crazy and in this age nowadays they couldn't connect themselves on facebook on the internet they're not alone anymore they can connect and then they have guns and they start fucking doing crazy shit man they go into the capital uh, the capital in washington they they try to rush into the into the bundestag and i feel like these people here's my opinion and call me whatever you want to call me these people need some fucking control they can't be left unattended they can't be left alone they are just too far off we have to actively correct our past mistakes with every year we waste more extreme changes will be unavoidable let's take a deep breath rapid climate change and yes, the world we live in are it. complicated so here is where you dear viewer come in again if controlling the freedom of millions will lead to the greater good, provingly the greater good, which is hot, is it really the greater good? I think it makes sense. Again. Boom. Could you please fix the climate? A narrative of our time is that we are all responsible for rapid climate change. That everyone... The question is obviously, would the proposal be for the greater good? Like, let's say, let's make an example. The Green Party takes over the world and they say, you can't drive a car anymore. Fuck you. We're going to kill you if you drive a car. Obviously, that's far more complex. Far, far more complex, right? Totally, man. Thank you, uh, Illuminati. Thank you for the 10. Yeah. Fucking hell, man. Thank you very much. We're actually very close to 5k subs. Just 1k left. Um, the thing is, truly, what is the greater good? What is the greater good, you know? Needs to play their part. Why don't you buy a new electric car? Why don't you replace your gas stove with an electric one? How about you double glaze your windows, stop eating meat and switch off your lights? Shifting responsibility from the largest carbon emitters to the average person, you, is much easier to do than solving problems. There's an extra bonus if solving rapid climate change sells a new product. If you don't have the money or time for these things, you should feel bad. It's an effective message because it's true. The quickest way to cut CO2 emissions would be if all rich populations on Earth drastically changed their lifestyles and if the people on the rise would not seek to achieve it, favoring the climate over comfort and wealth. If you're That's the point. Favoring climate over comfort and wealth. That is the big issue of rich nations. Most of these viewers, me, were from rich nations. Who wants to put away their comfort, their car, and their great lifestyle? And I always felt like the biggest the biggest strength and the biggest weakness of the human race is ego. Ego is, is, is it, as Charles Manson used to say, old ego is a too much thing. If you're able to watch this video, that includes you. But, 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 really but we've just witnessed right a thing. global experiment in staying at home, so not complex. using transport, and consuming less during the coronavirus pandemic. And all it did was reduce CO2 emissions by 7% for 2020. Asking average people to solve rapid climate change breaks down when we look at the scale of the problem. 
personal contributions towards reducing greenhouse gas emissions are nice, but they are dwarfed yes, by the systemic it's reality it's of global emissions. The concept of your personal carbon footprint was popularized by the oil producer BP in a 2005 ad campaign. Arguably one of the most effective and sinister pieces of propaganda that still seriously distracts all of us from the reality of the situation. If you eliminated 100% of your emissions for the rest of your life, you would save one second's worth of emissions from the global energy sector. Even the most... Which shows my argument of that you have to control the masses. Because if you... He's literally showing it. If you leave the people alone... A motivated person can't work. even make a tiny dent. When we put together the dangers of rapid climate change, the scale of emissions and the lack of consensus over how to solve it, the challenge seems insurmountable. It can cause decision fatigue and moral licensing where you no longer feel bad about behaving in a counterproductive way. I didn't listen correctly. We have Thank struggled a long time with this, which is why this video took us so long to make. So, what can you actually do? Here we go. There are many different takes, and they are passionately discussed. We don't know who's right, so we can only offer you the Kurzgesagt perspective and opinion. Opinion part. What can you actually do? We need a different way to think and talk about rapid climate change. An all-encompassing systemic approach, nothing less than changing the fundamentals of our modern industrial societies. As discussed in frustrating length, the personal responsibility angle is overplayed. For systemic changes in technology, politics... You know what I think the solution is to climate change and all these problems? Here we go. Tommy's going to solve the biggest problem of our generation. I think it's happiness. The world has always been looked upon as GDP. How much money we're making. How much growth are we doing? Growth, growth, growth. Money, 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 money. I want a big car. I want a yacht, a house. And in the book I was reading, Homo Deus, he proposed that in the future it might look like, and you see it right now in rich countries where young generations, what, what, you know what's happening with young people right now more and more? They don't care anymore. They don't need a big house. They don't want a yacht anymore. My friends, which are all 30-year-old academics, they don't want this anymore. Many people I know, for example, Lisa's best friend, um, literally says, I'd rather work less and have more free time and make less money. I'm okay with making less money, but having a happier life. And what the, the book was proposing, uh, the guy, is that in the future, it could happen that value, a con a, the a country should be judged upon is happiness. When, when machines take over work and you you know the the four week uh, the four day week is coming and you have to work less and less because technology is rising, what what becomes important is happiness. And if you can manage to make the population of planet Earth happy without an SUV, uh, air travel every year, uh, meat every day, if you can manage to make a population happy with not so materialistic things and bad environmental things, you could have a population that is more open to having a less CO2 output. I think as a government in the future, maybe not yet, you should try to make people more satisfied and happy with less material. If you had more time for your hobbies and free time, you will be get overall more happy. You won't be a drone every day, eight hours work, work, work. I have to work, I have to work. But if you had more free time and, you know, and you don't need the fucking mansion and stuff, you know? I don't know. Six and the economy of this magnitude, we need to influence the people at the levers. Politicians need to know and feel strongly that the people care. Like I see it, that this is very privileged though. In my circle where I live, I mean, this is middle class academic Germans right very biased but lisa her friends my friends they're all really happy on 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 a low scale man they they don't want to overwork they are okay with making this money they don't want big bmws they don't want big houses they want a house but not fucking mansion they're okay with like these are good educated germans man and they don't want all the shit anymore which i think is is, is good I think that's Tommy good. It's it's a catastrophe for capitalism Tommy, love, if these people love, don't want to buy love. houses and, and cars anymore, right? But maybe then the system is... That their own success depends on tackling the rapid climate change. Slowly going away, yeah. When governments like and local are politicians are reluctant to change laws that affect their biggest tax contributors or campaign donors, we need to vote them.
says the guy who makes 10k a month. First of all, it's not my fault I make 10k a month. And secondly, I and maybe I'm lying, I will be okay with making less. Look, if all you guys stop watching and my sub count drops and I only make 1.5k a month, I will still sit here and it will be okay. It will be okay, man. And I don't mind sitting in a small apartment. I don't mind having a normal car. I don't mind not taking the airplane all the fucking time. It will be fucking okay. I'm out and vote in people who respect science. We need to hold them accountable for implementing the most effective climate change strategies. Not waste our time with things like banning plastic straws, but by moving the big levers. Food, transportation and energy, while not forgetting the smaller ones like cement or construction. When industries fight against changing their ways for fear of losses or an honest attempt to protect their own, we need politicians to change the laws and incentivize the deployment of existing technologies and massively invest in innovation for the fields where we don't have great solutions yet. Yeah, that's what I. Agree. There's no reason that the profit interests of industries could not match. Like I feel like the human race is too dumb to fix global warming, and I don't even blame it. I'm, I'm the same. I drive a car. I just flew a plane. I don't take myself out of it. I'm also bad for the environment. Um, and uh, it's, it seems like technology is our only way out of this. And it needs to be funded. It needs to be funded. It's the need to reduce. And you always hear stuff like in Germany, they give 32 million to, to certain um, scientific research. And then they give 4 billion to the car industry where you're like, Jesus, man, what the fuck are these investments into technology? It's carbon emissions as much as possible. And if they still don't cooperate, harsh punishments and regulation need to force or bankrupt don't them. Don't let these fucks bother you for making money. Oh, I, 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 I don't mind about that. There's always, you know, there's two ways to become rich or make a lot of money. Two ways. And that is you want it or it happened accidentally. That's very important. When a Wall Street guy walks over corpses to become a millionaire, you could kind of be like, eh, hmm. but if like, and I'm going to defend myself here. If you look at Tommy, I accidentally make a lot of money. I didn't plan it. I just felt like, ooh, I want to stream video games. This is fun to me. This is what I want to do. And randomly, without me trying it, Twitch says, oh, you're very successful. Here's 10k a month. I was at my fault, you know? It's not my fault. I think what's important is to stay humble and not be an asshole about it and be like, oh, I'm so much better than others. That's important, but... Many low-carbon technologies still kinda, need a lot of oh, time so and coming. research, which means they're expensive. But more companies will make more efficient Maybe carbon capture systems. I'm literally top 0.02% on Twitch, my dude. What are you... Top 10%, man? Are you crazy? Are you crazy, you man? You wanna... You wanna talk shit to me? You... You ring for dinner? Are you crazy or what? I'm top 0.02%. I'm also the number one most watched Skyrim channel in the world. You want to talk shit? Where is that statistic, man? Top 10%, Junger. What are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking about? Top 10%? Come on, man. Come on, man. Give me that Gucci bag. Where is my uh, Ferrari? Tasty meat alternatives, better batteries, cement alternatives, and so on, if there's a clear and growing demand. And if you're affluent enough, you can do your. By the way, next week, Drew Donald podcast. It's actually. Part by investing in these things right now while they're still expensive. These Price are the mechanisms that will drive the prices down later on. So, this is basically what you can do vote at the ballot, vote with your wallet. There are too many opposing interests and complicated gray zones. In the end, if we truly get the systemic change we need, Everybody will be unhappy about some aspect yeah, that's of it. Point, right? Only if we all accept that some solutions will have negative impacts for us can we have an honest conversation and make progress. It seems Everybody that will be a little unhappy, and that's okay. This is the best and you can do. do that. You can Thank deal you with the reality of the situation and promote your priorities through your behavior and your actions. And while you do so, you can eat less meat, fly less, or get an electric car. Not because you should feel guilty if you don't, or because you naively believe that you alone can stop rapid climate change, but to do your tiny, tiny part for the systemic change we need. Hmm. This video was supported... Interesting, interesting.